nigga, I wear fur coats in the summer, nigga, white feeders in the winter. I've been thugging through my rainy days, the days. I ain't really trying to hang the day, the day. I need changes in a major way, the way. I just pray I never fade away. Oh man, a man can't even boy. It's lit. <laughs> Thank you for coming out here, man. It's lit. This is Boogie, man. In case you don't know, man, get familiar, man. Everything's for sale. Yeah. Shady what he said. aftermath, man. Shady gang, man. We out here in the Woo. city. Got to go Elliot Wilson with me. I'm finna play him these records because it's lit. You got to talk about these records, man. A lot I of know. We, we gonna content, talk. We're going to chop it up. We're going to break down the records and shit. You did it your way, too, man. People feel like, well, the guy's on Shady. Can he get his vision out? I feel like this is all your vision. Yeah, I wasn't finna let nobody control me. Shout out to my big dog, M, but nobody can Damn. control me. Paul Rosenberg too? Yeah, shout out, big, shout out Big Paul. Let's do it, man. Lit, man. Everything's for sale, man. Yeah, everything. Let's go. Cartel. Shady, my chance it was slim. Hey. All my women was basic. We see different reasons. Yeah, Cartel's boogie. It's lit. What's up, baby? Man, how you doing, man? Long journey to get to this album, right? Yeah, I know, man. Long, long journey. Felt like forever. What do you, what do you think the statement is you're trying to make overall with this body of work? Uh, with this project, I think it's just the story of, of a frustrated rapper. Uh, the times we in the climate of the game. It's a rapper every week, damn near. Uh, every yeah. Friday, it's a new rapper. So it don't matter how good you rap, it's how you gonna stand out. And, and unfortunately, we to the point where everything for sale, your integrity, you gotta sacrifice all that to get popping. Like your morals, your integrity, gangbang culture is for sale, it feel like. It just feel like that's the time we in right now. So everything for sale is kind of like a statement of, yeah. of, of no matter what, no matter what delays the frustration, you had to maintain your authenticity and, and get your yeah, vision out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that, and I was able to be do that even though you're signed to a big major label, nah, yeah, Eminem. Sure. Like a lot of times, people feel like if you sign to an artist, sometimes you can't get your full vision out. They put their imp yeah. input on what your art is. Like, how were you able to like maintain Boogie's perspective? Uh, that was thing? the thing with, with the jump for me and Shady. He told me when he met me uh, that he didn't he believed in what I was already doing and he didn't want to control or try to change nothing I was doing. And I wouldn't have let nobody do that anyway. I, I always got to have creative control over my project, so. Yeah. It was easy. It wasn't no pressure, honestly. It's no more pressure than the pressure I put on myself. I, no matter how big Eminem is or, or Interscope is, I'm always going to put more pressure on myself. You deliver, man. Let's get into that music, yeah, man. Yeah, man, for how sure. How you want to start? You, want, you got one of the best intros out. I oh, man. We're going back from the top. We're going back from the top. We can start from the top because I love this intro. Yeah. Talking about it. Fade up. Get high. Yo, yo. They like, nigga, we tired of hearing you poor. I your heart about how you in the struggle and how you at war With yourself and how you not confident and you insecure Niggas tired of that shit, I don't wanna hear that story no more I'm tired. Nigga, ain't you tired of telling it? Ain't you tired of not being the intro, John, tired reflections, man Why the transition? Like, I noticed on a lot of records on the album, it's like Almost two parts, like you're reflecting one thought and then you go into another Uh, yeah, just, just giving different layers, uh, different perspectives, uh at the beginning, a, a tired is what, what I feel like other people telling me, like they tired of me hearing me rap about conscious shit. And it's like <laughs> people in the background telling me that and then- Turn up, yeah, like exactly, some turn up, exactly, man. You ain't got no exactly, turn up, exactly, like No motherfucking turn up. And why did that feel right for the intro? Uh, I think you just set the tone. Uh, I think the intro is probably the most important track on every album and I think my intro is I always want to make sure I rap a lot, do a lot of rapping to let niggas know early because I know I'm going to end up singing on the project. So yeah. in the intro, I want to make sure I let niggas know early like I really a bar y'all up. So put like three verses on there. <laughs> why does the singing, because you, you've gotten even more better with the singing. Like why is the singing component also, as much as we respect you for your bars, why is not the singing component become so important? Uh, I think it's trying to find more ways to stand out. I'm from this city, uh, it's the home of Kendrick. So <laughs> if you just rap good, it's gonna be hard to, to like separate yourself. So um, for, uh, fortunately, I went to church and I learned how to sing good as hell. <laughs> and, I, and I got edge over a lot of niggas. So, so that's all uh, from the church days? Yeah, exactly, it all came from church. My church is around here, matter of fact. Where you wanna go next, man? Uh, let's see, I guess I could put- Everything's for sale. I could play this. This is my favorite singing song because I push myself. I hit some falsetto notes. It's swap me. She need a space, yeah. She left a man and got a spot in Silver Lake, yeah. That silver lining, see perfections and mistakes, yeah. Try not to say, yeah. No 
that you tarnish when you sit there with that blank stick. What zone do you get into with that? Is it like, do you, do you have to get some people uh, out the studio? Like, uh, I definitely, when you make a song it gotta like be, that? It gotta be early in the morning when I haven't smoked a lot already that day because my voice be shot towards the end of the day. So I can only hear falsettos like from 9 to 12. <laughs> Nine in the morning and twelve afternoon. How do you know where to hit a falsetto when it's time? Oh uh, man, I think this time around, my my people around me this time just pushed me to try different stuff with my voice. I probably wouldn't have did that if I didn't have my manager Justice, cause he yeah. was just like, you gotta sing on this one. You also got some guests on this album, man. Oh uh, yeah, matter of fact, in honor, I need to decide who was worthy enough to share that stage with Boogie on this album. Uh, well, everything is like relationship based for me. I, I don't really be trying to force no features. Um, yeah. The M feature came because that's gang shit. I would have been pissed if he wouldn't have gave me a feature for my <laughs> album. Uh, Jid is my bro, and it makes sense because everybody seemed to want to put me and Jid uh, neck and neck with each other all the time or put us in the same box, yeah. and that's my bro. So yeah. that was that was easy. Me and Black, that's my bro. I just got off tour with him. We got the same management, yeah. so it just made sense. Let's get into one of those. Which one you want? Uh, let's do since Jid was on here. Let's yeah. do the Jid record. Visual yeah, too? Yeah, let's let's do one the record. You got to talk about your crazy visuals, man. Uh, yeah, I got the is... greatest videos ever in the history of rap. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. My videos is amazing. You have the greatest videos yeah, already? Yeah, I feel like I do. If you people look at my catalog of videos, it's just amazing. And I don't even like capping myself up like this or like hyping myself up, but it's just facts. And plus, I don't have nothing to do with the video's direction. So yeah, it's, so not like, it's, it's not like I'm hyping myself up right now and just yeah. tooting my own horn. It's Gina and Riley. And one of them is from, from Australia and the other one is an actress. Riley. But self-destruction, my manager Justice did. Okay. Yeah, but besides that, that's visuals. Been, yeah, exactly. Let's get into this one with Jid, right? Soho, because I hate Soho. That, I hate that place. I had to go to Compton to meet you. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't go to Soho. I just performed at Soho during <laughs> Grammy weekend. And I performed Soho and let you know I fucking hate that place. <laughs> <laughs> get tired of coming from Compton to go to Hollywood. You made me come to fucking Compton. Exactly. Be, uh, First rapper ever. Exactly. Traffic be like an hour. Shit, we. Oh man, yo yo, put no more meeting at Soho. Please no more thinking we bro bros. I fucking told you I'm sick of these niggas who wanna be all in the videos and the photos. I think I should sign in that roto. I'm, I'm local. I'm pocket from popping the pussy let poco. I'm ch ch trying to be optimistic, but my options limited and I'm boxed in. You gotta stop these niggas before they got me. Get Shout out my boy J, man. That's my guy, man. Yeah, I love that song too. What's special about him, man? These he, bars is there. Uh, I just don't like. I don't, I don't like a lot of. I don't really like a lot of rap niggas these days because. <laughs> Niggas is not good. It's only like a few niggas I really like respect. Well, that that actually when I hear rap, because I feel like we all supposed to motivate each other and make each yeah. other want to get better. And it's only a few niggas that I feel like make me want to get better. And Jid one of the few. So. And I feel like your your videos also convey that, like you saying, like the song, like you're not about going to Soho with the whole Hollywood industry yeah, type yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know, your thing is, you should, it seems like you shoot a lot of the stuff even here in Compton. Like yeah, I shot the whole, thing. my whole short uh, documentary, my whole uh, short film in, in my neighborhood. I really don't see no point of being in Hollywood. I'm like, I feel like somewhere in the long people made it seem like that's when you made it, when you get to Hollywood. But making it is like being over here happy with my people and them seeing me succeed and shit like that. So fuck Hollywood. And what's your take on Compton being this force like for so long? We hear about, you know, we hear from the Dre's to the Kendrick, like why, what is it special about uh, this place? I don't know, I think it's just a beautiful struggle. Um, it's, a, it's an ugly city, but it got so much beauty under the, under that ugliness. And mm. and the resilient the resilience is people get from having to overcome all the obstacles. I guess it just make great music and, and great stories. Yeah. And you saw Kendrick's kind of come up more. Yeah, exactly, closer, yeah, right? yeah, I saw it. It was, it's like one of my biggest motivations also, like seeing what he could do. And seeing how far he he went, it's like yeah. nigga. Cause like Section 80 is a one level of fame. Yeah, no, bro. Kendrick like... is out. Kendrick is out of here. He's a he's a star. Nobody can <laughs> tell me anything. He's one of the biggest stars in the world, and he's from my neighborhood. So therefore, he to go. Yeah. Well, let's get the one, other one with your homie Black, right? Yeah, uh, Black. All that's management, shit. same yeah. team. So why is this management team? What's it? L LVR in man. Yeah. They just some young black niggas getting to it, man. <laughs> black History Month. Shout out my niggas. <laughs> Uh, but no, all jokes aside, I had. Because imagine it has dreads. Is that yeah, what it exactly. Is? That's just one of them. It's a whole team. LVR and Justice is just one of them. But he, no, he my boy. But um, I had good management Shout before. Also. Yeah, I had good management with this dude named Clayton before. But me and him hit like a wall, and we reached a certain point where I couldn't go any further with him. And then, uh, luckily, I met these these innovative black dudes who ready to like push shit to the next level. 
and again they black not like that but it's yeah. just it's just amazing well, it's just fellow creators, it just feel, right? it's just it's amazing seeing people from your from the same place as you not the same city but like the same environment as you and make it and, and they got great ideas all the time like shit i would never think about when i'm just so locked in on the music shit that i never would think about they help me with like them, them commercials the promo i didn't realize how important that shit was because i'd be just so like yeah. all that matters is music like the music do the talk it's yeah. not it's not just that it's so much more and i gotta shout them out for that now so yeah this my song with black Start off too. Uh, you call to see if I was home then Sleeping and get boring uh, I'm Stuck in my view, don't you see me trying to watch the game Don't be wasting time asking how to say my name Another 24 gone, wishing I had 25 been 24, think about a damn 69. Everybody said, every time black comes in out of nowhere. <laughs> I know, he do. It just popped up. That shit was amazing. It was the funniest story about this song is that my manager sent black. I wanted black to be on Skydive 1. Okay. And uh, so we sent it to him, and black was like, yeah, this Skydive song hard. I'm finna go off. And they sent it back to us, and it was on this beat. I was like, and my manager was like, oh, I sent him the wrong version. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, fuck it, it's so that's how we got hard. Skydive yeah, too. Exactly. It that's was, how sequels are born. It was supposed to be on Skydive 1, but it just happened. I guess everybody let us on. It's Silent Right Home. It's for the ratchets. <laughs> all the cyber, uh, all the mind, yeah. Uh, I can't lie, I'm detached, I need guidance. Uh, I've been dying, uh, I've been fighting. Got this voice in my mind, won't be quiet. Silent ride home. The ratchet. <laughs> Why you say for the ratchet? I don't know, it's just an LA ratchet sound. <laughs> the, the beat just reminds me of every LA ratchet It's like classic LA vibe. Yeah, exactly, for sure. That's crazy. Where does this, like, the overall soulfulness come from? Like, what did you grow uh, up yeah. listening to? Like, was it gospel music? That's really. My mom wasn't like heavy in the music like that. She you played like that secular stuff. Nah, she, I don't know what she was playing. Honestly, <laughs> I think my mom like LL Cool J or some Jaheem and shit. But I didn't really listen to that shit. I was just listening to gospel music. And then when I started picking my own music, it was always R and B for some reason. So I don't listen to rap, honestly. Yeah. So who was some of your, like '90s R and B? Lauren Hill, my favorite artist ever in okay. the history of being an artist. Lauren Hill, and then Jay Z after that. What's that last joint about? The last one out. The last joint on the album, Time. Yeah. That's a joint with uh, Snow Allegra. That's just about me sliding on on this girl only at nighttime when I'm faded, and me like <laughs> being too busy during the day. So yeah, I get to that. I guess this be our outro. You tell me all the time, no. You tell me it ain't right. I treat you like a side ho. I can let you go. Pretty ass. <laughs> I smell like her, man. She blessed you? She blessed me with a cold verse. And she had a longer verse, but yeah. I knew people was gonna be fiending for her verse more, like for the song more if I like cut her verse short and she yeah. was mad at me a little bit, but I had to do it because it, it just made people fiend for her for her more for some reason. I've seen people say that in some reviews, like how you kept things kind of like yeah. short and abrupt. Yeah. Was that I mean, by design the way the song? Yeah, goes? they just gotta deal with it. Um <laughs> that's just what I felt. That's what my spirit was taking me, like, yeah, y'all gonna fiend for her more. So yeah, I did that. <laughs> Well, you passed the car test. Hey, man, it's lit. Shout out to my nigga Elliot Wilson, man. We out here in Bompton, America, man. It's lit. We survived. We survived. We got kind of crazy for a little bit. We survived. It probably be a real experience. Yeah, man, for sure. It was fun, man. I can't wait for the next project, man. Man, thank you. Appreciate how do you measure, you, before we got, how do you measure success with this? Like, it doesn't matter. You just got uh, to nah, yeah, out numbers. I'm, not, I'm just trying to, they, I mean, I'm happy, of course, but I'm ready to be back in the studio because I feel like Pitchfork gave me a 7.1 and they got me fucked up. And then, <laughs> I seen this other Call nigga. The yeah, I've seen this other nigga on YouTube, Anthony something. <laughs> he a YouTuber and then he gave me like a six and I them two is like the only one that's been sticking in my head. Clap back season. So I'm on you pitchfork. Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Clap back. That's your Grammy. Man, for sure. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you, Boogie Man. Contest, man. Title. It's lit.